Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In the previous tutorial, we learned about the page object model concept, right? Where I have created some test, some pages files, and I have gone through like how we create and what is the benefit of these page object model concept, right? Let's recap. So the main benefit of the page object model concept is EG in maintenance, right? Like example, here we have a login page. So login page element locators as well as the function I created here in this page. And where needed in our test script, I am just using this method, login method. Suppose that in future, there are some changes in the element locators, right? Then in that case, we need to update the element locators at only one place. It will be automatically reflected in the test script right because we are not directly using this in the test script this is uniquely defined here if we change here this will be uh, uh, like easy in maintenance at one place we need to update even also if there is any changes in the actions like methods like here suppose that currently there are three two fields username password but let's suppose that there are some other field introduced like enter the otp or some other fields, right? Are other changes, then in that case, the login method we need to update only once, right? Not in multiple places. So this is the easy in maintenance if we are using page object model concept. Second is the code reusability. Code reusability means you can see uh, earlier when we started this, uh, we are using this set of code multiple places in the test script, right? In all the test script we are using. But we when we define this as a method, then now I'm using this method for the login in our test scripts, right? So in that case, so here, this is the reusability means we are, we have, we have don't have a duplicate code, it's the code, which is exist, which is available in the pages file. We are reusing in our test script. Second is readability, right? So this is also much helpful in the readability format. Like suppose that if our framework is gro grown and we have multiple pages files as well as the multiple test script. So if we go suppose that login screen, login page, a dashboard page. So if we need to check any method that is already available or not in the code base, already created or not, right? In that case, we need to go and check in corresponding files, pages files, we will not check in other files. Right. So this is very easy in readability format also. Right. Now in this tutorial, I am going to show how we use the configuration. Configuration means, right. So the username and password and URL, these should be configured or other environment data should be configured from the, uh, some uh, external files, some config files. Environment is hard coded in the test script suppose that in future if we want to change or anybody who is a non-technical person don't know the java if he need to ch change to run the test on different environment then he need to go in the code right if sim single mistake if he did it will start getting the syntax errors some errors right so that's why in the java in the selenium web driver we are creating here the some configuration files where we are putting environment data configuration files may be excel file csv file json file depending upon the uh, what file we are going to plan but in the java java provide inbuilt function inbuilt class that is the properties so we can use the properties files to put the environment data so let's create a properties files so properties file is just like a normal file right we are creating its extension is a properties okay in the properties file we need to put the value in key and value pair like username is admin password we can put here equal to admin one two three similar type we have url we can put here url okay let me so we need to put this in a 
other files like I am putting here in conf config dot properties files, right? Now we need to write a Java code to read the file data from these files. Let's see how we write the code to read the files in a properties file. So let's create here a static method which will load the file content and then from object we will call the uh, get the value. So let's create a static block. So we can also create a class function right to read the files, hit the file every time and read when needed. But the best approach we can create a static block so that it will once when we start running our automation code, it's load all the properties file and then add level further in Java object. So in that case, first we need to create here uh, object as a properties. Okay, so this is the inbuilt class. A properties class which are available in java.util package right so this is provided by java now we need to write the code here to read the file content so first let's create a properties object okay properties object i created here and this because we are going to create a static block so let's create a variable as a static. Now next we need to use file input stream to read the file. Okay. And here we need to pass the file object. This file name, file name is config dot properties okay so this is the config file properties it will return as the file input object let me surround this using try catch now next code we need to use the properties object to load this file file we need to call load and pass the file object this one here it's also uh, through the uh, compile time exception, right? So we need to handle this. So let's add one more exception. Now, this properties object when we are using properties dot load, so it will load complete file data, right? But we need data by using the key. So in that case, let's create a method public return type string get config and then return this method should be static because we are going to use static variables return properties dot get object this one and here we can pass a key so key we can need to pass as an argument okay then dot to a string this is the method which will read data from the uh, config file so we can add some more uh, handling here further we can extend so we can check we if first if we are passing the key as a null right or different value so it should raise the error here so again, also if the properties key is not available in the properties file, properties files, config dot properties files, in that case we can handle and raise the uh, some user defined message. Okay. So now let's use this here uh, to read the value from the config files, username, password, and URL. So I'm going to create here another annotation like before suite. Why? Because when we are running the automation test, right? So at the beginning, before should be executed load the data read the files and load in variables these variables and then all the test script will running because before should be run once in a test suit execution so i'm giving this git config 
so next is the username equal to get uh, set of config in set of suit method I am giving so then here first we are going to read the user so the user key what is available here in the properties file we need to pass this similar type I can read the password I can read the URL password URL okay these values now move into the properties file so I can remove this okay this is the password and this is the I can give the app URL let's create a variable here app URL app URL variable created right this app URL I need to pass here to open the URL let's use the Java coding standard first letter a variable should be in a small okay now all the configuration is username password URL is moved in a config.properties files now this is not hard coded in our test script okay let's let me run the login test and you will see it will work Yeah, test working successfully. Now, if I look what is the benefit of the putting environment data in a config.properties file, right? So in that case, like suppose that if we need to change the username, password or these URL to run the test on different environment, then we need to update only in our config.properties. We don't need to go and update in a uh, our automation code right also we can extend we can create a multiple config or properties files based on the environments at runtime from command line what config file we will provide it will read the data from that particular files so this we can also parameterized right from the command line or from the ci environment so that's why we are using so this will be very very helpful and uh, to configure our framework right so here as of now I put the three values but in later we can extend we can use the multiple configurations values here like example if we want to configure the browser on which browser we need to run we can give the value here if we want to give some uh, times uh, which we can increase and decrease for the timeout we can provide with in config files okay uh, some others uh, like headless mod disable and enable if we are using cloud environment like source lab browser stacks right so we can configure we can provide the credential as well as the details in the config properties files right so this will be very very helpful so hope this will be helpful and uh, you understand why we are uh, moving the environment detail in the config files okay and uh, in the next tutorial, we will discuss how we use the uh, Selenium uh, function uh, separately, how we create uh, so that in future, if there any function is deprecated, that will be easy to update in the one files. Okay, how we create a customized Selenium function in our test script. So let's meet in the next tutorial. And if you like the tutorial, click on the like button, subscribe the channel, share this tutorial to your friends and colleagues and leave a comment if you have any query.